tell you how much heat, mechanical work, etc., it can generate, is measured in calories. feel so superior and smart that other people would like to catch them out once on something. I will give you something to get them. They should be utterly ashamed of the way they take energy and measure it in a host of different ways with different names. It is absurd that energy can be measured in calories and herbs and pounds and BTUs and horsepower hours in kilowatt hours. All Which you've just finished observing, then you can never make any prediction. 
that the only utility of science is to go on and to try to make guesses. So what we always do is to stick our heads in. And in the case of energy, the most likely thing is that it is conserved in other places. Of course, this means that science is uncertain. The moment that you make a proposition about a region of experience that you have not directly seen, then you must be uncertain. But we always must make statements about the regions that we have not seen, or the whole business is no use. For instance, the mass of an object changes when it moves because of the conservation of energy. Because of the relation of mass and energy, the energy associated with the motion appears as an extra mass, so things get heavier when they move. Newton believed that this was not the case, and that the masses stayed constant. When it was discovered that the Newtonian idea was false, everyone kept saying what a terrible thing it was that physicists had found out that they were wrong. Why did they think they were right? The effect is very small and only shows when you get near the speed of light. If you spin a top, it weighs the same as if you did not spin it to within a very, very fine fraction. Should they then have said, if you do not move any faster than so-and-so, then the mass does not change. That would then be certain. No, because if the experiment happened to have been done only with tops of wood, copper, and steel, they would have had to say, tops made out of copper, wood, and steel, when not moving any faster than so-and-so. You see, we do not know all the conditions we need for an experiment. It is not known whether a radioactive top would have a mass that is concerned. So we have to make guesses in order to give any utility at all to science. In order to avoid simply describing experiments that have been done, we have to propose laws beyond their observed brain. There is nothing wrong with that, despite the fact that it makes science uncertain. If you thought before that science was certain, well, that is just an error on your part. To return, then, to our list of conservation laws, figure 14, we can add energy. It is conserved perfectly as far as we know. It does not come in units. Now the question is, is it the source of a field? The answer is yes. Einstein understood gravitation as being generated by energy. Energy and mass are equivalent, and so Newton's interpretation that the mass is what produces gravity has been modified to the statement that the energy produces the gravity. There are other laws similar to the conservation of energy in the sense that they are not. One of them is momentum. If you take all the masses of an object, multiply them by the velocities, and add them all together, the sum is the momentum of the particles, and the total amount of momentum is conserved. Energy and momentum are now understood to be very closely related, so I have put them in the same column of our field. Another example of a conserved quantity is angular momentum, an item which we discussed before. The angular momentum is the area generated per second by objects moving about. For example, if we have a moving object and we take any center whatsoever, then the speed at which the area, figure 17, is swept out by a line from center to object increases, multiplied by the mass of the object, and added together for all the objects, is called the angular momentum. And that quantity does not change. So we have conservation of angular momentum. Incidentally, at first sight, if you know too much physics, you might think that the angular momentum is not conserved. Like the energy, it appears in different forms. Although most people think it only appears in motion, it does appear in other forms, as I will illustrate. If you have a wire and move a magnet up into it, increasing the magnetic field through the flux through the wire, there will be an electric current. That is how electric generators work. Imagine that instead of a wire, I have a disk on which there are electric charges analogous to the electrons in the wire. Figure 18. Now I bring a magnet dead center along the axis from far away, very rapidly up to the disk, so that now there is a flux chain. Then, just as in the wire, the charges will start to go around. If the disc were on a wheel, it would be spinning by the time I had brought the magnet. That does not look like conservation of angular momentum, because when the magnet is 
this far away from the disk, nothing is turning, and when they are close together, it is spinning. Oh yes, you said, I know. There must be some other kind of interaction that makes the magnet spin the opposite way. That is not the case. There is no electrical force on the magnet tending to twist it the opposite way. The explanation is that angular momentum appears in two forms. One of them is angular momentum of motion, and the other is angular momentum in electric and magnetic fields. There is angular momentum in the field around the magnet, although it does not appear as motion, and this has the opposite sign to the spin. If we take the opposite case, it is even clearer, figure 19. If we have just the particles and the magnet close together, and everything is standing still, I say there is angular momentum in the field, a hidden form of angular momentum which does not appear as actual rotation. When you pull the magnet down and take the instrument apart, then all the fields separate, and the angular momentum now has to appear, and the disk will start to spin. The law that makes it spin is the law of induction of electricity. Whether angular momentum comes in units is very difficult for me to answer. At first sight, it appears that it is absolutely impossible that angular momentum comes in units, because angular momentum depends upon the direction in which you project the picture. You are looking at an area change, and obviously this will be different depending on whether it is looked on from an angle or a straight line. If angular momentum
In this case, the only thing that counts in the area sweep, where the conservation of angular momentum 